Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetrabit Gaming, the series where we take a look at scrapped, unused, and unseen content in video games. Super Mario Odyssey is without a doubt one of the best games on the Nintendo Switch. From new worlds to new gameplay mechanics and everything in between, the game is an absolute joy to play. Thanks to a few game explorers, namely a random talking bush and Skyers M, various content has been discovered that goes unused in the game, which we will go over in this video. As always, really quickly before we begin, if at any point you guys do enjoy the video, please be sure to slap a like down below, it seriously helps the channel out a lot. And with all of that said, go grab your caps, it's time to do the Odyssey and find some lost bits. Alright, to start things off, there is an unused original version of some New Donk City graffiti, which can apparently be found somewhere unseen to us in the T-Rex chase area. Since this artwork isn't mapped to anything, it was probably left over by accident. When compared to the altered artwork that we see in the final version in the main New Donk City area, we can see that Pauline's artwork was completely changed, likely since I guess the early version, without a proper context, could be seen as slightly lewd. Additionally, the NDC letters were touched up a bit from the early version, and the tower was repositioned and redrawn. Next up are two unused 8-bit sprites. Well, actually, apparently all of the 8-bit assets in the game are 3D models instead of just sprites. Anyways, first is a set of unused small Mario graphics. This was obviously intended to be used in the 8-bit segments when Mario would take damage, but in the final game this idea was scrapped and Mario remains in regular size the entire time. The other unused graphics are 8-bit purple coins from the Metro Kingdom that have already been collected. All 100 of New Donk City's purple coins are found in the normal 3D sections, so perhaps at one point some coins were planned to be in the 8-bit sections where you play World 1-1, or maybe even in the New Donk City Festival. Either way, this idea was scrapped, and with it the purpose of including these coins in the game. In the game's files, there also exists an unused early version of the texture of the globe which Mario throws Cappy on near the Odyssey. As you can see, the map underwent a pretty significant change. The biggest thing you'll notice is that in the final game, the texture is much more colorful and vibrant. Also, much of the landforms have been changed as well. Among other changes, the Cascade Kingdom changed from what looks like a T-Rex skull to a Triceratops, the area near the Lake Kingdom was almost completely changed, and the Luncheon Kingdom was altered to look less like a fork. Perhaps the biggest change, however, is the removal of what appears to be Isle Delfino found near the Mushroom Kingdom. I think it would have made a lot more sense to keep it in there to better connect the different Mario games. But with the latest edition of the Super Mario Sunshine costume, I'm still hopeful for some Super Mario Sunshine DLC in the future. So far, only one piece of unused music has been discovered in the game, so let's just quickly get it out of the way here. This unused song is an 8-bit song variant that would have been used during the A Traditional Festival mission in New Donk City when picking up the Multimoon. Okay, let's get back to some more unused models. Even before Luigi's role as Balloon Boy was announced, an early unused model for Mario's brother was found in the game's files. When compared to the model used in the game, we can see several differences such as his new bow tie, darker overalls and shoes, and not to mention his new facial expressions. Next up is an unused purple coin labeled as Coin Collect M. Now these appear to be just basic placeholders used before special designs for each set of purple coins was made for each kingdom. Lastly, there is an unused model simply called Mario 3D that is apparently a leftover model from Super Mario 3D World, but with Mario being recolorized in a color scheme similar to that seen in the original Super Mario Bros. Some fans have speculated that this was an early version of a scrapped 8-bit Mario color costume that could be bought or unlocked with the 8-bit Mario amiibo. And speaking of unused costumes in the game, in addition to the unused 8-bit Mario cap, there are a whopping 11 other costume and cap descriptions in the game's files that are currently unavailable. The Knight, Musician, and Mario Sunshine outfits were all here initially too before they were released, so I'm hoping more of these are added eventually as well. Anyways, there's lots of them, so let's go through all the outfits that aren't available as of yet. As mentioned earlier, the 8-bit Mario cap description would read, A hat that takes you back to where it all began. Again, this would either just be another color swap, or maybe it would turn Mario into a 3D 8-bit version, sort of how the Super Mario 64 outfit works. 
Next is a baseball costume likely to be inspired by the artwork on the baseball game for the Game Boy in which Mario makes an appearance. The hat is simply described as a right-hander's batting helmet in bright red. While the uniform has a description, whether you play baseball or not, you've got to admit those pinstripes are snazzy. A conductor wig is described as having a wig that reminds us of the greatest and baldest conductors. Are we finally going to see Mario with the receding hairline? The conductor outfit is also described as designed for the tiny part of us that wants to wave a stick at musicians. This perhaps would lead to some sort of interactions with the musicians in New Donk City. Next is an unused racing costume. The hat is described as a helmet that'll get you pumped up for drifting and hairpin turns. And the outfit would say, you will enjoy driving more if you're wearing this outfit, guaranteed. Surprisingly enough, an unused Santa costume is also listed here. The Santa hat is described as, another red hat beloved by children. And the Santa outfit, the only thing this outfit is missing is a big bag of power-up items for the kids. I'm guessing this was planned to or still might come out as DLC closer to Christmas time. The next unused costume is a pretty obscure but neat reference to an old Super Famicom accessory only seen in Japan known as the Satellaview. This accessory would attach to a Super Famicom and would receive signals broadcasted from a satellite via a subscription service. As crazy as this sounds, it was reported that at its peak well over 100,000 households in Japan were using the service. You know, this thing sounds really cool and I'll probably make a separate video on it someday. Anyways, the hat is described as a memento of some forgotten service, and the suit is described as an outfit that represents what the future used to look like. Based on the description referring to the future, many believe that the costume would be derived from this old Satellaview advertisement with Mario floating in space. I'm guessing this costume was scrapped because it was deemed too obscure for regions outside of Japan, or maybe because it was too similar to the space costume. Have you ever read a Mario Walking Dead crossover fanfic? Me neither, but if you did, then this costume might have looked like something you might have imagined in it. That's right, there is also a reference to a zombie Mario costume. The hat description reads, a masterwork of practical effects. And then the outfit would have been described as, when an outfit crosses the line between distressed and undead. There are also references to costumes for each one of the four Brutals, Harriet, Rango, Spewart, and Topper. Probably the most interesting unused costume reference is for a Link costume from The Legend of Zelda. The Link hat was described as a hat from a far off land. And the Link suit was described, This outfit from another land comes complete with back accessories, sadly non-removable. These back accessories sound like they were Link's sword and shield. The weird thing is that unlike every other unused costume that I mentioned, the reference to this costume was actually removed from the game's files in the most recent update. So who knows if we're ever going to get to see it again. Maybe the Odyssey development team is salty that Breath of the Wild won the 2017 Game of the Year award. In any case, much like the three DLC costumes already released, I have a very strong feeling that we will get to see more of these costumes released along with other DLC in the coming months. Now about the costumes that are in the game, there is one that has underwent some small changes. An early version of the Diddy Kong suit can be found in the game's files, which features a brighter red shirt, different yellow stars, as well as more general texture differences. And lastly for this video are some unused hint artworks. First we have four unused hints found in the game's files which appear to have been taken earlier in the game's development. For example, in this hint art from the Wooded Kingdom, we can see an early design for the health meter, mini-map, Poochie, and what appears to have been a different look to the moon icons. The lighting in the final version of this location also appears to have been changed. The next biggest change can be seen in the unused Seaside Kingdom hint. Firstly, the shadows and geometry of the background were much improved from the early version, and the water carbonation effect was also not present in the early art. The placement of the platforms and seaweed is also drastically different when compared to the final game. The early unused hints for the Luncheon and Snow Kingdoms both look like they were taken closer to the game's release, and they don't have as many changes as seen in the previous hints. In both of these cases, however, it looks like some lighting and textures were altered. What's really weird is that with the most recent update to the game, the early Wooded Kingdom hint art was removed, but in its place, 20 new unused hint art thumbnails were added to the game's files for whatever reason. Each of these hints has the word TEMPORARY written in Japanese in the top left corners. At first I thought maybe some more moons were added to the game with the update, but it appears that even though these hints were added, the moons still have not. 
Even though the moons aren't there, these really test how well you remember a level and they were still pretty fun to try and solve. Anyways, let's quickly go through these hints. First is this crescent moon looking thing. But if we look closer... Yep, Nathaniel Paragoomba Bandy every time. And where do we see those with the top hat? Why, the Cap Kingdom, of course. And the X would have been right behind the tallest tower. Next is a bunch of 8-bit sprites of a Spiny, Bullet Bill, Hammer Bro, and a Koopa. At first I thought this was in an 8-bit segment, but nope, it's actually the engravings in the rocks in the Cascade Kingdom. This flower, as you can tell by the sand color, can be found in the Sand Kingdom. The next hint is also in the Sand Kingdom, judging by the two inverted pyramids, and the moon would have been directly below the smaller one. This one again made me think it would be in an 8-bit section, but I guess you can't ground pound there, so I don't know why I keep thinking that. But anyways, it turns out this one is at the rocky wall in the Wooded Kingdom that you have to shoot after capturing a Sherm. This next one is kind of tough. At first, after seeing Mario spelled out, I thought it would have been in the Metro Kingdom by the letters that spell out Mario, but it turns out that the cracks near the crazy cap store in the Lake Kingdom can spell Mario too. There's only one kingdom that has colors like this, and that's the Cloud Kingdom. This one's kind of lame because it just tells you the coordinates to find this one. This one I quickly realized was the top-down view of the trees in the Lost Kingdom with the yellow circle being the Odyssey Balloon. Easy peasy. The next one is also in the Lost Kingdom with the multicolored circles clearly being the Tropical Wigglers. The first Metro Kingdom hint is another easy one with the moon being hidden near the plaque in front of the City Hall. The second new donk hint is a bit more creative, showing that the moon was going to be found at the intersection of Expresso and K. Rule streets. The next Seaside Kingdom hint is a bit misleading because it's actually upside down. There's only one place in the area with this many seaweed boys, so this one was another pretty easy one. The Snow Kingdom hint featuring Poochie requires you to grow the vine and use its shadow to guide you to the power moon. The two Luncheon Kingdom hints were also pretty easy. The first one is just one of the fence pole things in this row, and the other one is found above the area's 8-bit segment. The Ruined Kingdom is another pretty easy one considering how small the area is. You basically just need to know where the claw marks are. The Bowser Kingdom hint was a bit tougher, but it turns out it's just at the top of the last roof before the boss fight. The next hint for the Moon Kingdom appears to be incomplete with a quarter of the hint seemingly missing and the hint not really making much sense. It does give you both the C and D coordinates, so I'm guessing it's somewhere around here, but there's no really way of telling for certain. The first Mushroom Kingdom hint requires you to remember all of the paths in the area and realize that the moon would be somewhere near this circular path. The other hint shows two of the bosses that you can refight here. Judging by this hint, it looks like the moon would have been found exactly between the two towers where you enter to fight these bosses. And sorry, one more thing. Although I wasn't able to recreate and verify this myself, apparently if you look at the license plates of the non-moving taxis in New Donk City through the new coin filter, the plate number will change from 1981, which is a reference to the year Donkey Kong was released, to a seemingly random 6258. I have no idea if this was just a glitch or if the game calls a different model when the taxi is viewed through the filter or something, but it's definitely strange, that's for sure. And with that concludes this Lost Bits video on Super Mario Odyssey, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like down below and also let me know what other Lost Bits you'd like to see next. There's rumors of methods to dump even more files from this game eventually, so as usual, if enough more interesting stuff gets discovered, I will certainly make a part 2 to this video. If you're new here and enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe and click on the card right here to check out some more awesome Lost Bits. And if you would like to stay even more up to date with me and the channel, consider following me on other social media sites such as Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch, as well as join my Discord server which will all be linked in the description below. But as always guys, thank you all so much for watching today and for all of your amazing support, and I will see you in a bit!